Welcome back to Grid Talk, everybody. This is episode number 316, and today we're going to be here to give our 2023 mid-season driver grades. My name is George Housen, and joining me this week, we have Grid Talk hosts Ruby Price. Hello. Tom Horrocks. Hello. And broadcaster Charlie White. Hey, everyone. But first, before we get into the grades themselves, it's sponsor time. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for basketball, baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website now or head on your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use the cr- uh, promo code BLEAV, that's BLEAV. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Right. So, and where we're starting is uh, the lowest rated driver uh, on the on the grid, in our opinions. We've collated all of like, all the grades from all the different people on grid talk. I think there's about 15 or so people who have given their take. So we should get a fairly representative average of all the drivers. If you're new to this series, we normally do this in like a school system. So F being failed, but in the lowest one, all the way up to A plus or A star, whichever way you're inclined with that one. And unsurprisingly, we're going to start with uh, Nick DeVries with this one. Um, as he was, as he's quite literally, unfortunately failed in the most literal sense of the uh, sense of the word. Uh, because he's not made it to the halfway point of the season, he's been he's been let go of by the Red Bull system. Not a huge surprise in a sense, given how Red Bull treat the drivers. Um, I think most of us went with an F one uh, F for this one, uh, Tom. But what's what's your take on Nick DeVries? Because was he hot too harshly treated? Is is F an accurate grade for him? Just give your take on him. I think unfortunately, I mean, as you rightly say, he has failed at F one. I do think that. He was, he's come on on this wave of expectation from Helmut Marko seeing something shiny and just going, yep, he's our guy. Um, and I, I just don't think he was ever really the right person. Like his Formula One champion, his Formula E, sorry, championship win was was the the last year of the of the old qualifying system where you kept getting jumped up and around the the uh, the grid left right and center and and in re- reality Stoffel van Dorn was the driver that had the better pace out of the two drivers over the course of the season but just to, due to a, a weird qualifying format he wasn't you know he was the one that that was more consistent and this season it's been, been, been much the same he's was it 14th this has been his best finish he's not been particularly crashy he's but he's just been slow I, I think the the comment of he's just in no session has he ever impressed them and and it's just a it's a bit of a damning indictment really for someone who's who's come in with such a wave of expectation on the back of a brilliant performance in one race and has just massively under delivered and it is harsh and they always say you need three seasons, but Nick DeVries was the person who was saying, don't treat me as a rookie. He had so much experience. He's driven every power unit on the grid at some point. He's driven, I think he drove six different F1 cars last year. And so unfortunately, although it's harsh, it's it's deserved in that sense as well. And and I do feel really sorry for him because it, it, he's, a, he's a nice guy and everything. He's, but I just don't think he was ever really cut out for Formula One in the first place. And, and um, yeah, it's just one of the things, just the, the wrong person at a time in Formula One where everything is so tight and he was in an uncompetitive car against the driver who really stepped up his game. And wrong place, wrong time for Nick De Vries, but unfortunately thoroughly deserved. Yeah, that that's Formula One for you. It's a, it's a very cutthroat business, especially when you're in the Red Bull system. Um, not helped, of course, by the AlphaTauri, probably being the worst car on the grid this season. Um, but at the same time, even compared to Sonoda, who's another person who's been under pressure over the years, he's just not performed. And Danny Ricciardo's in that car now for the rest of the season. We're not going to cover Danny Ricciardo, just so everybody's aware as well. He's only had two races, so I think it's a bit unfair to grade him off of that. We will cover him when we do the the full season grades at the end of the season. Uh, but for now, we're going to leave him on that one. Uh, and we'll move up into the, the D grade category. We're going to go with Lance Stroll first. Our resident Canadian, Charlie, uh, <laughs> is going to take this one. Um, Stro- I think Stroll gets D in every single grades that we've done for <laughs> this series over the years. He's just flattering to deceive. We we did think maybe, oh, maybe this guy's actually going to step it up this season after he had his injury and did pretty well in the first few rounds. But surprisingly since he's healed he's actually gotten worse uh so as the aston martin is as well um so do you think d's about right for for stroll this season so far charlie 
yeah, no, I think D is incredibly fair, especially when you start to um, break down the numbers between him and Alonzo. Uh, I was up doing some number crunching last night and Alonzo has by my count, uh, quick count. It was six podiums on the year. Stroll's closest to it was fourth in Australia. I believe it was. And it, he's never been that close since, and it's just progressively fallen off. And the fourth was also with broken wrists. So again, the injury seemed to make him drive better. Uh, he's uh, last year. He was, I think it was, um, I can't remember the races, but you know, he, he was caught in some issues where trying to defend too late and that kind of stuff, which was classic stroll stuff. And this year, well, that kind of dangerous maneuvering has gone seemingly away. He's still doing stroll things in Monaco. Uh, he tried to put a, the car where it didn't need to be. And it cost him his race there, I believe. And just, he's just being stroll. And as you can look into the numbers, qualifying he's got six three times uh his lowest was 20th or sorry 20th 18th uh that was and in the race the actual grand prix day his highest place is fourth his lowest place he's had two dnfs but the big gap on why he has a degrade i think is when you start to compare his lap times or his race times with alonzo they both have identical cars and he is on average, every race, 22.32 seconds slower. When you take all 12 races and you break it down like that, th- that's in, in a car at the start of the season, that was quick. It was a very good car. But, but now it's starting to fall off that everybody's catching up. But the closest he's ever been was 2.313. And that was, again, that fourth place in Australia. Everything else, he's had gaps of 54 seconds, like 29, 38. Like, it's just unreal for a car like that when, and Alonzo is a step above Stroll. We all can agree to that, whether we like Alonzo or not. He is a skilled driver. But Stroll in a car that was that good at the start should be able to perform and get more points than what he is he is currently getting. And um, I know we've said on previous shows that he is going to cost alpha or alpha uh, Aston Martin constructors places. And it just keeps chipping, chipping away. And I, I, if there's a very real possibility, they will be fifth. I think if, especially if McLaren are uh, uh, as resurgent as what they seem to be. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that one. And as people who follow our socials, which are now we're at Grid Talk UK on a lot of, of those, if you want to go and follow them, um, seen, seen would have seen that I did a, a a quick video on there, basically saying that McLaren are going to probably overtake Ferrari and um and Aston Martin. As a very biased McLaren fan, you could take that with many pinches of salt if you want, but it is definitely a possibility with with how those teams have been performing. And unfortunately, Stroll seems to have got worse with um with the car. Um. But he's not helped by the fact he's got a teammate uh, that is really, really quick. Alonso is a very quick driver, as is Alex Albon. And I think that's potentially what is causing the issues for Logan Sargent this season, Ruby. The fact that it's fact for me is, I mean, I think Logan's done a decent job. I think I gave him a C in my grades. We've rated him as a D overall. But the problem is, is that he's got no points and Albon's got 11. Albon's more experienced. Albon's quicker, quite frankly. But that is a huge gap at the end of the day. So do you think a D is probably about right for the American? I think you're definitely right in terms of teammate comparisons having an impact on this. I also rated uh, Sergeant a C for just having a sort of average season. He is obviously a rookie and last season um, did perform relatively well in F2, but, um, you know, at least he's not come in and been P20 every race. Um, But in terms of like positioning, like his best race was Britain this season where he was just on the verge of points in you know, what was a good Williams car. Um, I think he just needs the rest of the season to become more of like, I think we can, I can see Logan Sargent getting a point this season, but in terms of like how far his first part of the season's gone, average or, you know, maybe just a little bit under, which is probably why it's got a D in the end. Um, You know, there's been three last uh, finishes, um, and generally he does finish lower than he starts. Um, 
And we all remember what happened in Monaco where we'd gone most of the race without an overtake. And then we got three overtakes in one lap. And who was at fault? It was Logan Sargent. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, it's difficult in the days of rookies just come into, into F1. He didn't exactly light F2 alive before in the season before. So there, there, there is that. I, th- I think he definitely can improve. And he'll probably get a point this season. And when he does that, Maybe we're maybe we're talking about more of a C driver overall. Um, uh, but also in the D category is uh, Zhou Guan Yu, the Chinese driver for Alfa Romeo. Tom, I think I remember when I was listening to Monkey See last year, you were quite a relatively big defender of the guy, seeing the fact, the fact he was a rookie last year, probably playing a part in that. But how how do you think he's got on so far this season? Because the Alfa Romeo car is is not a good one by any means. But would you perhaps be wanting potentially a bit more from him in the second season i do yeah and um i think i was i was more of a defender in that i had such a low bar for joe that he impressed me because i expected him to be absolutely terrible um given that if four seasons in f2 and then he uh and and he still wasn't able to win the thing you know i think he did maybe he did in his last season i'm not even sure he did to be honest but but it, it was more on that side of things so he impressed me on that level but um this season it's it's kind of like it's a it's an odd second season. He's he's made a step, which you would expect he would he would have to do, but the car's not as good as last year, and and he's not really improved that much for me. You know, he, he's had he got a fastest lap in the first race, which um, was obviously when when Alfa Romeo thought they'd be fighting with Alpine, which they may well be the way things are going. But um, at that point, it was you know, it, well, you're eleventh anyway, so. So we'll um, we'll just throw away that eleventh place and finish P sixteen and get the fastest lap because it will take it away from Alpine and and so it, it's kind of like the, the lofty ambitions at that point but the car has just been so bad it, there's, there's been you've got that midfield and the and the leading pack and then you've got the three cars at the back uh, three four cars at the back and and they're all so close together they go from being the sixth fastest car to the tenth fastest car sometimes between stints it's just not a great car to showcase your talent so i think the jury is still out on him as a driver when you compare him to his teammate though it, it's eight four um for qualifying and for races in bottas's favor um and you know he's doing better than them in the sprints but you know that's such a small sample set it's just difficult to treat that as a trend but i just think that with with just two p9s i don't think we've seen enough to say he's definitely safe for next year. I think he probably will be because I think he's got enough in his pocket to to bring that forward. But I don't think moving forward long term, he's going to be a prospect that, that Audi are going to be interested beyond. You know, he'd probably stay in Formula 1 until 2025, but he needs to make a big step up for next season if he wants any chance of being part of that works team and probably a place in Formula 1 beyond there because, you know, his commercial value can only take, take him so far. Yeah, exactly. And the, and the other thing as well with that is, uh, you know, if he's not Alfa Romeo, then who is he going to go to? And I don't really see another place for him, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, very good point as well about the Audi money coming in eventually too. Um, yeah, we'll move on to, uh, we're going to group both hash drivers together. Um, Magnussen ended up getting a D overall. Hulkenberg is the first in our C category. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I agree with both of them. I think I went with both of those grades for that. I think Magnussen this season has flattered to deceive. I think he has, he's not really performed that well, especially compared to Nico Hulkenberg, who's coming after a couple of years out and in qualifying, especially, is doing absolute bits in that Haas, Charlie. But Haas's problem, like we've said all through the season, it's the tyre wear. They just cannot control the tyre wear. But do you think D for Magnussen and, Hulken- and a C for Hulkenberg is probably about right for the Haas guys? Uh, D, I think, is fair. I might even go so much to say as D minus for Magnuson, because if you compare the two Haas drivers again, uh, they're completely they're they're having two different two completely different seasons. Um, Magnuson's last point was in Miami with a tenth a tenth place finish. He did very well in qualifying there. He uh, he got p4 in qualifying but he's got 317 finishes uh over the the calendar year and 18th 15th 13th like his two points have been from two 10th place finishes so it hasn't been stellar from him at all uh he's averaging qualifying 15th and finishing the race at 16th so when you compare him to his teammate hulkenberg who has got a second place qualifying and uh, 
more, he's got most of the, the Haas points this year. Now, some of them have come from the sprint rather than the race, because you just look at the, the overall standings and where they start and where they finish and they just tumble. They like we've said ad nauseum, like they have great pace in one or two laps, but then they just start to fall off. I mean, Hulkenberg started in second, ended up in 15th. Like they just can't, they can't capitalize on what they're doing. That being said, personally, I think Hulkenberg C is fair, arguably a C plus. I think a case could be made because he is consistently putting the car in a position to do well. And as a driver, boiling it down to probably the barest you can get, you have two jobs. On Saturday, you got to put your car in a, a good position to win. And then Sunday, you have to capitalize on that. So he's doing 50% of that. And he's out qualifying Magnuson 9 to 3. And he's 50 50 on, uh, they're 50 50 on race splits on better positioning at the end of the day. So coming into the season, the, the debate was well, is. Uh, Hulkenberg the right choice for Haas given other drivers should they have gotten rid of Schumacher so on and so forth and you know it's been well he hasn't crashed comparatively the two Hulkenberg has been head and shoulders above Magnuson and was obviously the right choice so I think C is definitely fair for him again I personally argue C plus it's just the C is more likely because they can't they can't win or not so much win but they can't constantly maintain points they constantly drop back so but I think that's more the car than the driver quality in terms of Hulkenberg. Yeah, that's always a big thing with Formula One. Is it the car? Is it the driver? I think in this case, it's the it's the car a lot of the time. Um, that that car, that has car. In terms of qualifying performance, you might say it's a four star rating. In the in the race, it's like a one. But if you want to give us five stars, you can head over to iTunes or Spotify to so give us a five star review on there. And if you're one of the seventy two percent of people who aren't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, that tune in on there. You can do so. We really would appreciate that. Make sure you ring the bell as well to see see the notifications come through on that. Most episodes are recorded live. This is not one of those, but uh, but yeah, most of the shows are recorded live, especially the qualifying reviews, the sprint reviews, the race reviews. All the all the reviews are on there live. Um, but yeah, so sticking in the C category, and now I I think I remember in twenty twenty one or twenty twenty when we did this quite a few years ago. I think both Ferrari drivers got A ratings, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. It's a far cry from that, though, now. They are both firmly in the C category. I think Sainz is actually borderline D. I think he only just made it into the C category when I was uh, totting up the averages of those grades, Ruby. Um, But again, a bit like Haas, in a sense, is it the car? Is it the team? Is it the driver? But at the same time, you would be hoping for a bit more from both of Ferrari drivers this season. Has anyone seen Ferrari? The last time I saw the team that we had last season was Austria 2022. You know, like this this year, I, I don't, I, I mean, I, I've given both drivers a C um, and, you know, that's what Grid Talk has also given them. But if I was giving Ferrari a grade, I would give them an F because what has gone wrong? You know, you there are so many occasions where Carlos Sainz has been on a quicker tyre with a quicker car than his teammate, but because Charles Leclerc is the Ferrari golden boy, they cannot let him pass. And that, I think, is partially why a lot of people have ended up putting Carlos Sainz potentially into the D grade or lower, um, as opposed to Charles Leclerc. But if we look at um, the best results, Carlos's best result was Bahrain P4, starting P4. Um, Charles Leclerc's best result was austria starting p2 their best results are only ever when they don't go backwards um which is a very ferrari thing um and to be fair has been a very ferrari thing going very far back um but you know a few seasons ago if you told me charles leclerc was starting in p12 p13 you'd likely see him pushing for the podium there's been so many times this season where he's qualified p12 because of a Ferrari mistake during quality two. Um, and it's been like, is he going to even get in the top 10? Lo and behold, look at Spain. He doesn't. Um, but when you look at like Turkey, for example, a few seasons ago, he could have been on the podium in Turkey, um, Charles Leclerc. But ultimately, it's been average from the drivers in Ferrari. It's been awful from the team in Ferrari. And, you know, you've just got to think there's, 
so many things that they could have done so much better. And this is not the team that was challenging for the title for half of a season in 2022. They're not even going to be challenging for the top three teams, I think, this season. Yeah, they have dropped like a stone in terms of their form. Um, I mean, I think they qualified, what, fourth and fifth at Silverstone, something like that. And they ended up finishing behind Albon in the Williams. Take nothing away from Albon. He's been fantastic. He'll be coming up later on in the show. But that just shouldn't be possible. <laughs> it's almost impressive how bad their strategy is. And you got and you got to think the drivers have to have an input on in on that. They have to be doing something about it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Ferrari, Ferrari making a lot of bad decisions. You could argue that I myself has made a bad decision when it comes to the next driver on this list, Sergio Perez. Uh, obviously, the, the bet is still on. It's not decided yet. We've got ten races to go. My confidence is definitely waning, though. And and as well, uh, Tom. Perez only just made it into C. He was almost in the D category. I think a couple more D grades and he would have gone down there. Um, which is bizarre for, you might look at it on the surface. I mean, that's quite bizarre for a driver that's second in the championship. But even the biggest Sergio Perez fan will definitely say that this season has been disappointing for him. He should have and could have got a lot more. Yeah, I mean, that's no secret. But you've got to look at who his teammate is as well. And that kind of, that is more than anyone a uh, a forgiving reason for that and uh would it surprise listeners to see that i actually put gave sergio perez a c uh i i, I didn't go down the route of what my uh my monkey seat co-host did of giving george russell a z uh i uh i genuinely look back at his performances and for me he does sit in that c category but when you're in the best car on the grid that C is not good enough. If you're trying to win a championship, win a constructors championship, a C grade is not, you do not want a C grade driver. You want an A plus driver and you want a B driver minimum. That's, that's what you need to be looking for. And he's not lived up to that, but you know, you look at the performances of Max Verstappen. He has been, I mean, obviously I'm going to be talking about him later on anyway. So I'll, I'll try not to, to speak too much now, but when you've got someone who is so far ahead, it's, it's not really fair to then say that he's terrible because he isn't. And I think, you know, if you look at the performances of Logan Sargent is a, is a great comparison with Alex Albon is Alex Albon an A plus performing driver. Probably not. He's good. He's very good, but he's probably not in the same ballpark as Max Verstappen. And the difference between Sargent and Perez um, compared to their teammates is very similar. So I think the differential between those two drivers is very similar. So that's why I think, yes, Perez does need to do better, but a C grade for me does still feel just about right. Um, but he does need a, a strong second half of the season. And I think he probably could push into that B category by the end of the year, if he can actually outdo Max Verstappen in a race, because yeah, he's got a couple of wins. He's got a couple of poles. He's got a couple of fast laps. But they've all happened when Max has been away for whatever reason. He's not passed Max on track once. He's not out-qualified Max Verstappen in a standard qualifying session without something happening. He's not out-raced him in any stint, let alone a race. So it's just, it's not good enough. But, you know, it's okay. That's the thing. Perez is okay. And uh, I'm confident on my sombrero bet with you. Yeah, my, my confidence is uh, slowly waning, unfortunately, but we've, st we've still got Singapore to go. I've said it's the start. King of the streets. <laughs> Let's see what happens. But unfortunately, he's not king of our grades so far, Sergio Perez. One, one of the many, many drivers in the C category. Um, as is George Russell as well, Charlie. Um, now, last season, obviously, in terms of points, in terms of the fact that he only got, got the only win of Mercedes as um 2022 season, uh, uh, George Russell was riding on a high, but... How, how do you how do you rate him this season? Is it is it a case of Hamilton really just showing his his class and his quality, or has George Russell dropped off a little bit? I think it's a little bit of both because I went and watched back the uh, the driver gradings from the end of the season, and he was given an A, and he's dropped from an A to a C. And uh, I think I say I do think the reduction is fair because he did have a great season last year. He got Mercedes only win. Uh, he did well with that the, in the the sprint as well, if I remember rightly. Uh, in Brazil, he was fairly frequently in the top five. Like he just he put together a really good season. And this season, I think it part of it is Hamilton's looking better in a Mercedes uh, the way he should be. And I think some of it also comes down to because he's not 
performing as well. I think he might be starting to get into his own head a little because how many times have we seen in the last few races where it's raining, it's raining, but it's like sweat in his helmet and he's seems to be a little on edge because it's raining and stuff like that. And to use a, uh, uh, hockey term he's just gripping the stick too tight he's just trying too hard i think to try and push to that last year level and he's not doing bad by any stretch of the imagination fifth six he's he's got a podium this year uh when him and him and lewis went two three um but he's it's almost like he's kind of fallen back to not where he should be but lewis is the more experienced and veteran driver therefore lewis should be ahead of him if you're following what i'm getting at the Mercedes as well has gone from zero side pods to side pods. So it's not a different car, but the upgrades aren't performing necessarily how they want. They're not doing terrible, but they're, they're not making them go backwards, but they haven't given them the, 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 the impact that they were hoping for when they entered Silverstone. And, you know, he's, he's had a couple DNFs. He was knocked out in Q1 in Hungary and with three other Q2 exits, which again, I don't think you really seen at all last year, if that often. So I think, I do think C for Russell is, is fair, but I don't think he's, I don't think it's been a, a disaster of a season for him by any means. Yeah, certainly not the, uh, the Z grade that, uh, that Tom alluded to that Carl gave, <laughs> Carl gave him. Uh, if you can tell, Carl is not a big fan of George Russell. Um, but yeah, C's probably about right for him. Definitely got potential to improve. I think the Mercedes car will also improve as the season goes on as well. He definitely work his way back to a B by the end of the season. We'll see how that goes. Um, now, I did mention that Guan Yu Zhou was quite a difficult driver to grade. Valtteri Bottas, his teammate, is exactly the same as well, Ruby, I think. Um, but I think, in a sense, he's probably more disappointing. I mean, he seemed like he would have been Bottas version 5.0 or whatever it is now of his new mullet. And his uh his Aussie vibes that he seems to really um embrace for some reason. Uh but yeah, this season's just not been the one for him. He's beaten his teammate, obviously, so far, but you would probably expect better from a guy that was in Mercedes for five seasons, whatever it was. I think partly it comes down to expecting more of the car. Like if you think about compared to last season, this time last season at least. Uh, the Alfa Romeo was very underweight, which meant that in terms of all the other teams who had that weight, extra weight penalty, it was able to get the more out of its current performances. And, you know, we saw Valtteri Bottas chasing down Lewis Hamilton in some circuits for like just a position on the verge of the podiums. Um, but in terms of Bottas this season, you know, his best result is Bahrain again, start of the season. Um, but that Alfa Romeo just hasn't been very good. And the fact that the two drivers are within one point of each other in the uh, driver standings, with Bottas obviously being one point ahead, thanks to eight points in Bahrain and the P10 in Canada, where he pe- also performed well, I think, last season. Um, but yeah, Bottas's average, I gave him a C because we've not seen much from him. You know, at least he didn't cause a bit of a you know, mass driver retirement at the start of Hungary, like his teammate, which I think came to his detriment as well. But, you know, where that Alfa Romeo has had pace, it's just not materialized. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, we would like to have seen more from a driver who, when the stars aligned, could go toe to toe with Lewis Hamilton, but generally, you know, has always been one of the drivers that has just kind of been a little bit disappointing. Yeah, just just like his car in that sense. Uh, Alfa Romeo not making a good one this season. Same with Alfa Tauri too. Uh, but I think that Yuki Tsunoda has improved this season, Tom. Um, in the C category, like we were speaking about, I think that's probably fair. He's gotten points on a few occasions in the worst car of the grid, on the grid. Can't really ask too much more than that. I think I see it's probably about right for him. Well, I actually put Snowder in the B category, and I had to once I'd um, once I'd worked out all the all the scoring for all the races uh, as I do my driver grades on a, on a weekly basis. I go back and, and looked at the average, and and he came up in this in this B category, and I was like, "Have I was I was I drunk? I, I don't know. Like I just didn't expect him to be that high up, but he was he was the fifth highest grading on the grid." Um, so he was comfortably in that B category. And I, I look back through it and I thought, well, given that De Vries was so bad, was it just me, you know, uh, 
thinking he was doing better because of who he was up against. And I went back and looked at some of the races and, and you know, he's actually been really impressive this year. Yes. He's, he's comprehensively outperformed his teammate, but half in the, in what is the worst kind of grid, half of the races so far this year, he's been either 10th or 11th and that he's been very unlucky to only get three points finishes in that car. So he's going to have a real difficulty in the second half of the season with Daniel Ricciardo and I think realistically he does need to be close to Daniel Ricciardo or beat him for the second half of the season for his his career to to carry on with an upward trajectory. But he certainly earned, earned some friends this year with his performances, and he's not retired from any races. He's not crashed out in any race. I, I, I can't remember for certain on the sprints, but um, I'm pretty sure he's he's finished every single race, and that's not the crashy Snowder that we saw from from 2021. So he's definitely making steps. He's making strides. Is it going to be enough to get him in a Red Bull? Probably not. But if I was Yuki Tsunoda, I would be targeting 2026 and Aston Martin to replace either Fernando Alonso or Lance Stroll because that Honda backing might see him in that position and he may well be a driver to look for in the future in a fairly decent car. I don't think he's got a future with with this team unless they unless they massively improve in the next couple of years, I don't think we're going to see him, you know, pulling up any trees, but he certainly looks like he could be a, a, a good formula one driver now. So I'm, I'm actually happy to have him on the grid and, and becoming a bit of a Yuki fan, I have to say. <laughs> yeah. He, he came into formula one in 2021 with a lot of expectations around him, uh, had a f- good few first races. And after that, didn't really perform too well, but he's a lot more consistent now. Like you said, I didn't realize that about him finishing every race. That is that is very impressive. And that's exactly what you need to do when your car's not there in terms of performance. Um, and it's not really what Alpine have been doing this season so far, Charlie. Uh, we've put both of the uh, the French drivers and the French team in C category overall, Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly. There have been some bright spots like Gasly's uh, podium in the sprint in Belgium. But there's been a lot of embarrassing moments as well, like getting penalties, crashing into each other and getting penalties for on top of penalties and for not serving penalties correctly. Um, but is C about right for both the uh, both the Alpine drivers? Do you think? If there's one word that uh, describes the season of Alpine, it would be mediocre. It has been incredibly average across all fronts. Uh, they sit tenth and twelfth in the uh, the points, uh, the driver points. Uh, Alcon is tenth. Gasly is 12th. Even in constructors, they sit six, and there's 40 points uh, above to chase to McLaren, and there are about 40 point ish points above uh, Williams. Like they their race results, other than penalties when they're not blowing up or say getting penalties again, like they they, they just hover around 10th. They've had uh, Ocon had the the P3 in Monaco this year. That's the high watermark. But the team collectively has had seven DNFs and retirements throughout throw twelve races, and that's that's not <laughs> that's not how you win championships, let alone races. Like it's just it's just a bad it's a bad stat to have, and they're uh, yeah, it's just been a middle of the road season for them. So hopefully they can regroup after this and give a bit of a run. They're just in this weird no man's land. Yeah, and it's for a team that were aiming to get third, I think, at the start of the season. And at this rate, they're going to get sixth, which has to go down as a huge disappointment. Um, But someone who's not been disappointed this season, in my mind anyway, has been uh, Sir Lewis Hamilton Ruby. We've given him a B grade overall. Uh, Not managed to get a win yet, unfortunately, for him. But nobody aside from the Red Bull drivers have, so there's no disgrace in that. Uh, fourth in the standings overall, only a point behind Fernando Alonso, uh, so very close to third. And with the way both those teams are going, you'll probably overtake him soon for that. Um, is this Lewis back to his best uh, this this season so far? Because after losing losing out to George Russell last season, I think Hamilton's back with a vengeance in 2023. Is George is Lewis Hamilton back at his best? We're giving him a B grade. I mean, I dis I disagree with the grade, and personally, I think he should have maybe got a, an A. Um, when you look at where he is in terms of statistics and the car that he's driven, particularly towards the start of this season where he did finish P2. Um, but in terms of Lewis Hamilton being back at his best, it's good to see him back on form for sure. You know, he's 
broken that duck of not being able to get a pole position, which he had previously had every season up until 2022, um, since the start of his career. 2022, obviously, as well, being the season that he failed to win in a car for the first time as well, which when you think about 2009's McLaren or 2013's Mercedes, how did that streak last so long? But in terms of this season, you know, like I say, um, he's had two P2s. His best result for me was actually Spain, where he started P4. Um, but even like using interview quotes and stuff from Fernando Alonso, where Fernando obviously uh, finished P2 in Canada and had, I mean, I'm going to get to Fernando Alonso anyway, but um, he did obviously say that he had to put in qualifying laps for almost the entire race just to keep Lewis behind him. And that was with a car that had had, you know, the Mercedes B spec upgrades, by which we mean side pods. Imagine if those side pods had been on from the start of the season and we could have actually seen maybe a bit more of a fight up at the front when Lewis seemed to have that, you know, momentum and ability to maybe catch up to Max. But I think in terms of where he is, um, I definitely, you know, for now, let's leave it at B. But by the end of the season, I think as long as he continues his recent form, and Mercedes get ahead of the charging McLarens, I think it could be an A. Yeah, I, I believe he was quite borderline. Uh, I think he was almost into the A category. Um, just the same as Oscar Piastri was as well. I think he was almost into the A category as well. He's There's only two only two drivers in the B category, Hamilton and Piastri. Um, but Charlie, how impressive has Oscar Piastri been this season so far? Like, Obviously, the car was not the best at the start of the season. I was not very complimentary about it. But his form, to keep up with Lando Norris almost, in, especially in qualifying, um, to do that as a rookie when you're going up against a driver who is extremely highly rated as well, I think he's been brilliant. I think I gave him an A because I, I can't really think of how he could have done much better, really. It's just a little bit of experience he's lacking, but it's his first season. No, I agree. I think Piastri's done incredibly well. And out of the three... I'll say new drivers because DeVries did not want to be referred to as a rookie uh, this year. He is head and shoulders above Sargent. And then for the stint that DeVries was with us um, early on the, the McLaren had struggles. We all know that. And Sargent and DeVries were only ahead of him twice in 12 races. Now that was, that did include a very first race DNF in Bahrain. So it's not hard to, get behind incredibly slow cars when you're not driving. Um, so, but rookie wise, I think once he starts getting some more seasons under his belt and if Norris stays, I think Piastri really has a chance to, to propel um, McLaren into, into a contention for constructors. If McLaren can continue to deliver on these seemingly better upgrades and better cars in the future. Um What's incredible, again, but this also kind of plays into Alpine being very mediocre, is that he is one point off of Ocon for 10th, and he is 12 points ahead of Gasly, who is in uh, 12th. He's nestled right in the middle of their four rookie, too. So he missed a podium because of an unfortunate safety car, but like I, there's really no negatives in his drive. Like Even the... Um, even the the DNF where he uh, signs. Yeah, it was signs his fault, in my opinion, um, took him out of the race. Like he he had a bit of maturity in dealing with that. And even in the track, he gave himself distance. I think it was Tom Downey who was talking about he gave himself time. He gave himself breathing room so that he could try and react. It's just an uncontrolled car took him out. And like he he's showing maturity. He's showing like he belongs to be on that track. Yeah, absolutely. And for a guy that's so young as well, it, it's fantastic. And if you've actually seen him, which I, I didn't very briefly meet him at Silverstone, he's incredibly just chilled out. It's like, how are you driving a Formula One car at like 20 years old or whatever? And you're so, you're just so lax. You're just like, you think he's just chilling playing F123 or something. I think I get more stressed playing that game than he does driving a real Formula One car. But anyway, I digress. Uh, let's go into the A category now. We've got three drivers in the A category, starting with Alexander Albon, all the A's. Um, he's been fantastic in that Williams, hasn't he? 
Tom, uh, this this season. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, I don't think the car has been the best, but in low drag, in certain conditions, he's genuinely really put the cat amongst the pigeons. Yeah, he absolutely has um, made made a step up again this year. But um, I personally don't agree with the A grade. I gave him a B grade. And the reason that I had him in the B category was he's had some great performances, yes, but he still had two costly crashes that were you know very much his hit played a big part in, in that and his cost potential points there for the team uh obviously he's won a lot of points for the team which is great williams sitting at p7 they have not been that high for a very long time but when you look at his performances his consistency and you look at his teammate and obviously we know his teammate is, is very far off but again if you've got Logan Sargent in the in the D category, I'm not sure here how you can have Albon in the A category because they're not that far apart. He's only had a P7, a P8, a P10, uh, so it's not like he's 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 not streets and streets ahead of him. He's just outperforming him. So that, that for me, that's too much of a performance differential between between them. Um, so that's why I had him as as a a B overall. But he's definitely. He's definitely bounced back, which is great to see that that Albon has got a future because for there was a time there where he looked broken. Um, I do think he does have the potential again to push up into that that A category potentially, uh, but that's going to be that's going to be hard work because that Williams is not a great car. But he's also put himself in this fight. He's in a fight with Pierre Gasly in the championship, and he has, he's he's a little way off him, but you know he, realistically he could pass Pierre Gasly this season in that car, which is. Which is great, and to see him linked with drives in better teams again is is great to see. I'd like him to stay at Williams. I'd like him to kind of spearhead that that team's revival back into regular point scoring and podium contention. And I think he'd be a great driver for them moving forwards. But uh, but hope it's good to see that he is actually being linked with with these other drivers again because for a while there his career had stalled. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm very much on board with this this revival for Alex Albon, but not quite as excited about him as uh, as the rest of the grid talk crew seemingly. <laughs> I think we'll agree to disagree on this one. I, I think it's been fantastic, but I, I do, I do get your points about the differential and stuff. Um, but yeah, moving on to someone I think pretty universally got an A across the board. I could be wrong. I don't have the actual grade sheet in front of me at the moment. But uh, Fernando Alonso in um, also also got an A for his uh, for his first season in Aston Martin. Um, I I went. I think I went for an A for the guy. I think he's been brilliant. I, what's what's obviously hampered them is the pace of the car heading down the grid, but. At the same time, I still think he's wringing the neck out of that thing every weekend, Ruby. And I mean, he's, he's well ahead of his teammate, but I suppose it's not really saying much, is it? <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, his teammate's going for a stroll whilst he's going for a run. But hey. I mean, you know, I gave Fernando Alonso a B. Um, but I, I want to just talk about Fernando Alonso's results. So, you know, we start off in the season with the second best car visibly. Um you know, Bahrain P3, Saudi P3, Australia P3, Baku P4, Miami P3, Monaco P2. Then all the other teams start bringing in their upgrades. Aston Martin don't seem to have done much, um, at least how their results have been interpreted at the very least. But, you know, you've got Spain 7, Canada 2, which was a nice one for him. Um, Austria 5, Britain 7, Hungary, five, Hungary 9, and Belgium 5. It's been... a uh, two quarters of a season of very mixed bags um in terms of recent form fernando alonso has been very sort of mid level um still pushing obviously because you know he's still finishing generally ahead of his teammate but lance stroll has beaten him on several occasions this season and validly as well um as much as fernando's probably saying he's not gonna attack him but at the same time have you ever known fernando alonso to not attack a place um, you can guarantee if if Stroll had gone a tiny bit wide at any of those corners, Fernando's making a move. Um, but, you know, it's always been universal that when Fernando Alonso's in a car, you're going to get 110% of the pace out of it. Um, but in, I just don't think he's necessarily been at the top level consistently throughout this season. Um, and, you know, when his teammate has validly outperformed sometimes, who I think we gave Stroll a D. Um, I don't think that's an A. In a similar vein to what Tom was saying about Albon, ultimately. But, you know, that car definitely had the pace to have even won at some circuits, and it didn't. 
Well, that, that's the thing. It's, it's quite difficult because there's there's one team in particular, and one driver that we'll get to shortly, who is just uh, miles ahead of everybody. So winning a race this season for anybody is uh, very difficult, very difficult. Um, a guy that came quite close in a sense, or at least we thought potentially could have done, especially off the start line in Silverstone, is, is Lando Norris. And just, just like McLaren's uh, pace itself, he's been on a massive upturn. Um, it's been it's been fantastic for him so far this season, Charlie. He's, he's got an A grade overall. I mean, we've we've complimented him a lot. Both him and Piastri have done very well this season. Um, but the fact that Norris has got some of the results he has, I mean, it just speaks to the quality of the guy. I think. No, definitely, and it's especially when you look at again. We came into the season with a McLaren. And there was the big hoopla on the it's the MCL 60 because it's the 60th anniversary, so on and so forth. And it's big fanfare. And then it was absolutely a dog's breakfast of a car. It like we came in thinking that it would if Latifi was still on the track, he, it would be behind him, which like it was not looking good. But I think that's what plays into Norris's A grade. And that is the fact that he has drugged that car that was supposed to be so terrible in testing ahead of really where it should be, even before the upgrades were coming. He, he has had some struggles. Um, he's had four, four 17th finishes, but two of those were due to damage. The last really bad, uh, last really bad placing of 17 uh, was the uh, in Spain in turn one when him and Sir Hamilton collided. And since then, it's just been a, a constant stream up from 13th, fourth, two podiums. And then he did end up uh, seventh in spa, but I think that's more of the team strategy with the downforce, given the fact that it was absolutely raining cats and dogs practically all weekend, the actual race day, they set up for it with limited data and said, well, it's probably going to rain. And then it really didn't, but it's still, he went back from 19th, I think to end up where he started in seventh. So that's, that's quite a jump for a car that, on the straights was absolutely being passed by everyone. And when you start comparing, and I'll just go back to uh, Russell um, who had a C like their, their performances are fairly comparable, but Norris with the a Russell with a C. And I think that has to do with Norris pulling that car and showing how good of a driver he is with back-to-back podiums and, you know, just, not, he also didn't have a, a retirement this season either, which I believe so far only Sonoda was the only one mentioned that hasn't done that. I, I mean, there have been other drivers, but still, it's it's impressive. So, yeah, I we've complimented him every race. There's not really much more to say. He's doing a fantastic job with a car that wasn't necessarily the best, and he's making the best of it. Absolutely, yeah. And I'm very excited to see where he and McLaren get to in the second half of the season. Um if they can keep their upward trajectory going. Um, but someone who will be hoping for more consistency, more more just of everything that he's been doing so far this season is Matt Verstappen, the only guy in the A-plus slash A-star uh, category. Um, Tom, I mean, it's very difficult to see anybody winning else winning at the moment, unfortunately for me. Um, but just, I mean, at the same time, yes, he is a, he is a multiple world champion now. He is in the fastest car on the grid. But still, the level to which he's beating everybody, 20, 30 seconds every weekend. He, he, I think even Hamilton, at the peak of his dominance in the sport, didn't do that. Not every weekend anyway. So for Verstappen to do that, it's just, yeah, you, you can't really give him anything other than an A or an A star, really. He's a bit good, isn't he? He's, he's all right. <laughs> he's he's definitely uh, on the uh, on the right side of history for the results at the moment. Uh, yeah, he's he's phenomenal. He's he's having such a good season, and he's just relentless. Just every every race, every session, and we've known this about Max for years. He he wants to top every session. He just lives for racing. But the difference is this year he's got the car that can do it and a teammate that can't. So therefore, he's just absolutely steamrolling the competition. Now, I, you'd be you'd be forgiven to be saying that F one this year has been boring, but going back and and watching these races again, there's just been so many of them, so it's very easy to forget. I was saying to Ruby before we started that I forgot about the the, the triple red flag in Australia. That's just kind of how many races we've had. It's it's just this kind of stuff is easily forgotten. But he's just been so relentless. But 
there has been like the first half of the season, the, the first sort of six, seven races, it wasn't as cut and dry as we, as we, as it looked. There were some genuine races there, some chances where other people could have won races. Fernando Alonso should have won a race for Christ's sake. So, you know, that's the strategy errors there have, co have cost potentially even two race wins there for him. So it's not been an absolute steamroller in the first six, seven races. It's since those upgrades came in in Hungary, they've just moved completely clear of everyone else. And that's, I, do, I think Horner said there's not much going to be coming now, just some circuit specific stuff. So there's the, they've switched development to next year. So hopefully in the second half of the season, we'll see it closing up a little bit, but I think Max will still be on the same level. He will still be relentlessly fighting for these wins, every win as if it's his first. And that, that kind of, that kind of attitude and that kind of performance is unbeatable and frankly it's scary it's scary form he's that good at the moment and yes i agree he is uh he's certainly stronger at the moment than hamilton was through his dominant phase slightly better teammate i believe in in bottas and rosberg that he had to beat but equally there were you know there were lots of occasions where they were coming home one two like line stern that never happens in a rebel because he, he's not content in beating Perez. It's like Senna Prost. He's got to destroy him. He can't just be like, oh, I'll just get a couple of seconds up the road and then look after the engine. He's pulling out 20 second gaps going, oh, let's just make another pit stop. You know, it's just relentless. So you're right. It's there's, no, there's for me, there's nothing but an A plus for him. I know, um, um, I think even someone on this call didn't give him an A plus, but, uh, but uh, it's still, uh, I just don't see any other grade at the moment, even though we're only at the halfway point in the season. Yeah, it's it's quite frankly ridiculous, and it's and it's it's more likely I think that Red Bull in particular are going to win every race for the rest of the season to do something that no team has ever done. Even the Pete Mercedes and Ferrari and McLaren back in the day, they couldn't manage that, and they're going to potentially do it over a longer season than any of those guys had. So it's it's absolutely scary. It really is. Um, but we'll we'll be here to cover it all every session. <laughs> of course, uh, but those are the twenty drivers. I will just give a little um. Little rundown of them. So in F, we had Nick De Vries. In D, we had Lance Stroll, Guan Yu Zhou, Kevin Magnussen, Logan Sargent. C had Sergio Perez, Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz, George Russell, Esteban Ocon, Pierre Gasly, Nico Hulkenberg, Valtteri Bottas, and Yuki Tsunoda. B had Sir Lewis Hamilton and Oscar Piastri. A had Fernando Alonso, Lando Norris, and Alex Albon. And A plus was Max Verstappen. And so I've read all those guys out. And now I'll give you guys a chance to plug your outlets. So, Ruby, where can we hear and see more from you? Uh, if people want to hear more from me, they can listen to a lot of the back catalogue of Grid Talk. But if you want to hear more from me in a non-F1 fashion, you can find me on YouTube at Ruby Price and on the socials at Rubes, R-U-U-B-E-Z, 001 on Instagram and Threads. Yeah, definitely check her out on all of those. Tom, obviously you are one of the hosts on Grid Talk, but you're also a co-host with the uh, with the wonderful Carl King on Monkey Seat too. You're the first person to ever called him wonderful. <laughs> I truly meant that in every sense as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we we uh, we do uh, we do a slightly different vibe of podcast in the monkey seat where we just sit around prattling around and having fun and just taking the mick out of things, really, but all in a very nice, fun way without being particularly um, uh, nasty to anyone. Got a hundredth episode coming up in the summer break, so uh, that's a nice milestone to finally hit. So check us out on the uh, on the socials, uh, just at Monkey Seat Pod. Yeah, congrats on that. I definitely disagree that you're not very nasty, though, because uh, Carl is definitely nasty about George Russell. <laughs> but I'll let the people discover that for themselves. Uh, Charlie, I mentioned that you're a broadcaster. Uh, who are you involved with? Where can we uh, hear or see more from you? Uh, I'm with Eastlink uh, Community TV. So we are the Maritime Canada's number one sports channel. We're non-profit, but we do a lot of local grade stuff. So if you're in say maritime canada why not look us up yeah absolutely do that and uh yeah if you want to see and hear more from grid talk we're available on youtube where most of the episodes are recorded live not this one this is going to go out at a later date uh as well as amazon fire spotify google Podcasts, apple music verbal po and pocket cast just search for formula on grid talk on all of those and our big pack back catalog of shows as well over 300 episodes now and they're probably going to hit 400 by the end of the season i've not done the maths on that but i'm willing to bet we will do uh as well as that you can support us on patreon as well you can go for mics lights and better recording equipment like we showed off in our live episode not that long ago do check that out if you've not seen that before as well it was the austrian grand prix review and uh, also head over to 
uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel as well to see uh, the first to see when these episodes do go out. Uh, also, as well, make sure that you guys uh, head over to Bet Online where the game starts as well. Believe B L E A V fifty percent welcome bonus on that for your first deposit. And we'll be back next week to give our F1 hot takes. What could possibly go wrong with that? Join us for that. (laughs) See you guys later. Bye-bye.